Hello, everybody. Would you like to say hello, darling? Hi. Well, we're here. This is me and Caspian tonight, and we've got a very, very、uh, wonderful, wonderful situation, and we are going to be、um, quite excited. I'm quite excited. What are you excited about, well, darling? Well, because we have a puppy coming. But have we decided on a name for the puppy? I think I would call him Max. Well, there's a one little problem with calling him Max. Why? My brother's son is called Max, and if we call the puppy after my brother's son, is it a bit rude? No. No. We can have two Maxes.、Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, and why also not? Also, I have a friend, Max. You also so it have. There's going to be three Maxes. Three Maxes. So, in a way, it's like a compliment to your to to your friend,、yeah. is it? Yeah. Okay. Well, now when is the puppy coming? Hmm. Like in few days. In a few days, you're absolutely right. It's coming here in a few days. Shall we show the audience a picture of the puppies? We don't know which one is ours, do we? No. No, but there they are sleeping, and we are. Uh, basically, having Max the dog. Look, there you go. Somebody says Max the dog. Look at that.、Uh, Paul Maselli says, "See the puppy first before choosing his name." Now we've got another surprise tonight, haven't we? What's our surprise for tonight? We got a book to read. We have got a book to read, haven't we? And this is a book. You can all buy this book. It is a wonderful, wonderful book, and it is a book that I used to enjoy very, very much when I was about your age, didn't I, Caspian? Yeah, and I have it read. You have it read, but also you're not—you're getting quite good at reading in a way, aren't you? Yeah. Exactly. So what we're going to do? Oh, I've just moved the microphone there, but it's gone in front of your face, so that's no good. What we're going to do is I'm going to move the microphone here, so it's in front of me. And、then you get comfortable. Are you comfortable now? This is. We're actually going to read, because you know what we were thinking about it, and it's very, very important, you know, at these times to look on the positive side of life. And one of the most positive characters、mm. in the world is somebody called who? Mr. Pinkwhistle. Mr. Pinkwhistle, and Mr. Pinkwhistle. Is a very very positive man. I don't know if you've ever heard of Mr. Pinkwhistle, but this book is called *The Adventures of Mr. Pinkwhistle*, and it's written by somebody called Enid Blyton. Now, Enid came to stay at Camelot Castle. Did you know that, darling? Yeah. She came to stay here, and while she was here at Camelot Castle, she had all. Sorts of creative thoughts and creative ideas, and that's one of the things about Camelot Castle, is that you come here, you will experience all sort of magical, magical ideas, and good ideas. Now, Mr. Pinkwhistle, what's the thing about Mr. Pinkwhistle? And、what? I will tell something quite strange. I have a magic freezer. A magic freezer? What's it, that? It always has has some. Surprises and to get, and it can come. Sometimes it can come whenever it comes, and I and sometimes wherever you go, when you go into it, there's like a spiral going around, like a tornado, and you walk into it, and then you end up with a magic freezer, and you open it. It's like this. Yes. And then. There are lots of fun things in there. You can eat. One time, I even found an old video camera. Did you really? You found an old video camera in a magic freezer.、Mm -hmm. Well, this is. You see, this is the sort of thing that does happen at Camelot, of course. Now we what, have a magic freezer here. Well, we do. We do. And sometimes it can. Because this. Well, they can't see you over there, darling. They can't see you there. You've got to stay. You've got to stay on the camera. You see, that's the trick about、What? being on television. Like the、um, the car. 
a pit in this room can go down and become a ramp and then the magic freezer will c- drive up. Wow. Well, we're not going to show them the magic freezer tonight, but what we are going to do... But it might come. It might. Any second. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to tell this story. If you keep talking about it, it might come. Well, that's the funny thing about wishes, isn't it? Is if you do keep talking about them, if you keep putting a positive thought into the world then it could just happen any moment, isn't it? That's what we found out, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Absolutely right. See, we kept talking about a puppy, didn't we, for many, many months. We were talking about a puppy, and then what's happening now? We're getting one. We're getting one, you see. That's how life works. You basically, in yeah, this I world... Yeah, I can show a picture of the puppy. Okay, let's show a picture of the puppy again. There we go. There's a picture of the puppy. And... Absolutely fantastic. Now, shall we read our friends? Because I don't think our friends have heard about Mr. Pink Whistle. Shall no. we read them the story? No. Yeah. Yes, good. Okay, chapter one of The Adventures of Mr. Pink Whistle. No. What are we doing? I have to just properly print it in the sofa. Okay. What, what are you doing? Well, every time. You read it, it has to be pointed in here. Okay, well, give it to me so I can read it. Mm-hmm. Well done, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Okay, so are you comfortable? Mm-hmm. Well, now we'll begin. Uh, I think the magic freezer is coming up. <laughs> is the magic freezer coming up? Because uh, this is becoming a ramp. Okay, okay. Uh, Luke, Lucky Savoy says, she just says... I just opened the magic freezer and found a monkey. Hmm. What do you think about that? Well, magic freezers can come anywhere. Can they? Because they're magic. Well, will you give everybody permission to find a magic freezer in their house? Well, you can try and find it, but there's only... They're really red. There's only one in the... One magic freezer in the world. Really? Yeah, and it's my one. Is it And now? it can fly and it can drive wherever it wants to. Can it now? It can drive to any other house, any other, other house, any house. And are there, are there special words that somebody has to say in order for the magic no. freezer to arrive? It will, might just come if you keep talking about it. Or it might just come on its own. On its own. Because it's a magic one. Of course, of Doesn't course. Doesn't come if you call it. No, no, of course but, not. But only if I call it, it comes. Well, of course, it's your freezer. So yeah. this is this is absolutely the right thing to do with a magic freezer. Now, shall we read this little story? Yeah. Because I don't think many people know about Mr. Pink Whistle, do they? Mm-mm. Okay, chapter one. Chapter one. The Little Secret Man. It isn't fair, shouted Mr. Pink Whistle. It isn't fair. He stamped round the room in rage and his big black cat looked at him in alarm and put her tail under her out of his way. Here, I've just been reading about a poor man who saved up and bought a nice new teapot for his wife. And on his way home, A boy on roller skates banged into him and broke his precious teapot. (sniffs) Mr. Pink Whistle put his hands under the back of his coat, pursed up his lips and looked at his cat. Now, is that fair, Sooty, he shouted. Is that fair? Did anybody buy him another teapot? No. And look here. Here's a picture of a little girl who ran to pick up something for a friend and was knocked over by a car. Now I ask you, Sooty, is that fair? Now, who is Sooty, just so our friends understand? Well, I'll show you. This is Sooty. That's Sooty. And what is Sooty? A cat. And okay. this is Mr. Pink Whistle. <laughs> this is Mr. Pink Whistle. You're absolutely right. No, we ow, answered Sooty in surprise. Well, I don't think it's fair either, said Mr. Pink Whistle. I do think that if people are kind, they should be rewarded, not punished. 
And what's more, Sooty, I'm going to do something about it. Oh, yow, said Sooty, waving her tail a little. Sooty, you know that I'm a rather lonely little man, don't you? said Mr. Pinkwhistle with a sigh. And he stroked his big black cat, who began to purr at once. Brrr. You see, Sooty, I'm not like ordinary people, went on the little man, sinking down into the chair. I haven't any real friends except you. The reason is that I'm half a brownie and half a proper person. So the brownies don't like me very much, and ordinary people are afraid of me, because I've got brownie ears and green eyes like you. Rrrr, purred Sooty softly. She knew how kind her master was, even if he only was half and half. But Sooty, I've got a secret, whispered Mr. Pinkwhistle into the black cat's pointed ears. Yes, I've got a secret that I've never used yet. What's the secret? Well, I'll read in the book. I'll read in the book. I can make myself invisible whenever I like. Sooty didn't know what Mr. Pinkwhistle meant. She stared at him out of eyes as green as her master's. I'll show you what I mean, Sooty, said Mr. Pinkwhistle. He shut his eyes and murmured a few strange words that made Sooty tremble and shiver. And then Mr. Pinkwhistle disappeared. One moment he was there, and the next he was gone. Sooty blinked her eyes and looked all around the little warm kitchen. Her green eyes nearly fell out of her head in surprise. Where, oh where, had Mr. Pinkwhistle gone? Where had he gone, darling? Invisible. He was invisible. Sooty heard a faint giggle and there was Mr. Pinkwhistle back again. Sooty put her ears back and looked alarmed. meow meow she said. She hoped her master wasn't going to do this sort of thing very often. Now that's my secret, said Mr. Pinkwhistle, pleased. And what I'm going to do, sooty cat, is go into the big town and look out for unlucky people. I shall go into their houses and I shall disappear into thin air so that they don't know I'm there and I shall see that they get a reward for being kind. What do you think of that for a good idea, Sooty? <laughs> Is that a good idea? Yeah. <laughs> Wowie yow, answered Sooty. You stay here and keep house for me. Well, that's strange. Does that Sooty cat, is he able to do housework? Is she able to do housework? Yeah. Oh, that's clever. You stay here and keep house for me, said Mr. Pinkwhistle. I'll come back and see you often. Now I'll pack my bag and go. I won't let unfair things happen to people. I won't, I won't. I may only be half and half, but I'll just show the world what I can do. He packed his bag and rubbed his face against Sooty's soft head, ran out of the front door and waved goodbye. Sooty watched her kind, funny little master go and wondered what he would do. He won't be happy away from his cosy little home, said Sooty. I know he won't. I wonder whose house he will go to. Now, in the nearest town lived a hard-working little woman called Mrs. Spink. She had four children and it was very hard to feed and dress them properly. Wasn't it, darling? Yeah. What's happening there? Look at my tricks. Wee. Wee. Oh, Wee. look at you. Wee. Wee. Well, let's just see. What do people think about Mr. Pinkwhistle's plan to go into... Uh, what? Oh, somebody's selling hello, Caspian. Julie Carnell saying hello. Gain a point. It says, God bless you all. At times, it's best to leave politics and simply share sweet times with our children. That's what it's all about. The rest has been taken care of. Chris Ram says, Jack and Nori. Jack and Nori was a television program where you would hear stories like this. 
So should we continue with the story? Yeah. Okay. Now, in the nearest town was a woman. Do you want to just sit here nicely? Uh-huh. And snuggle up. No! Caspian. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to be reading. The, everybody's listening to the story. Mm-hmm. Now, in the nearest town lived a hard-working little woman called Mrs. Spink. She had four children, and it was very hard to feed and dress them properly. They didn't have many treats, but they were good little things and didn't grumble. One day they all came rushing home from school in excitement. There was Teddy with blue eyes and golden hair. There was Eliza with red curls. There was Harry with golden curls. And there was Bonnie with a mop of dark hair like a sweep's brush. They tore into the kitchen and made Mrs. Spink jump so much that she almost upset the pan. Mother, mother, there's a party at school on Thursday and we're all to go, cried Teddy. But you haven't got any nice clothes, says Mrs. Spink. Not any at all. You've only got the ones you have on. Down went. Can't you wash them, mother, and make them nice and clean? asked Eliza, almost in tears at the thought of not going to the party. Why, they had never been to one before. Well, on Wednesday afternoon, you must all go to bed so that I can wash your clothes ready for the party the next day, said their mother. That is the best I can do for you. Teddy, Eliza, Harry and Bonnie were quite willing to spend an afternoon in bed if only their mother would get their clothes ready for the party. Then she could wash them, iron them and bend them. So on Wednesday afternoon, all the four children, undressed, got into their ragged little night clothes and cuddled into bed with books to read. Mrs. Spink took the dirty clothes into the garden and set up her wash tub and began to wash all the clothes, socks, stockings, vests, knickers, shorts, shirts, petticoats, dresses, jerseys. Goodness, what a load of things there were. Goodness, what a lot of things there were. Mrs. Spink sang as she worked. She saw a funny little man with big ears and curious green eyes looking at her over the fence as she rubbed and scrubbed. Who do you think that was? Mr. Pinkwistle. That could have been Mr. Pinkwistle, couldn't it? Mm. Well, my four children. Well, my four children are going to their first party tomorrow, said Mrs. Spink, squeezing the dirty water from a frock. And that's enough to make any mother happy. Poor little things, they don't have many treats. I'm just washing the only clothes they have so that they can go clean and neat. When she looked up again, the funny little man was gone. That was strange, thought Mrs. Spink. She hadn't seen him go. She pegged up all the clothes on the line, emptied her tub and went indoors to get the tea. And do you know what happened? Mm -mm. The line broke. And down went all the clean clothes into the mud. Would you believe it? Poor Mrs. Spink. When she came out to see how the clothes were getting on, she could have cried. All of them were far dirtier than before. Well, well, said Mrs. Spink, in as cheerful a voice as she could manage. I'll just have to wash them all again. That's all. So she set to work once more and put all the clothes into her wash tub again. How are you doing with this story, darling? Are you enjoying it? Yeah. Good. Do you have any thoughts you'd like to share with our audience? Mm-mm, I'm thinking. Well, this is fantastic. I'll just have to wash them all again. That's all. So she set to work once more and put all the clothes into her wash tub again. How she rubbed and scrubbed away. She didn't see the funny little green-eyed man again, but he was there, all the same, watching her. He was sitting on the fence. Why couldn't she see him? He was in... 
because he was invisible. That's right. He was sitting on the fence, quite invisible. It isn't fair, he muttered to himself, after she washed all those clothes so beautifully. No, it isn't fair. Mrs. Dad, yes, darling. I have a question about the camera. Okay. Why, if I'm sitting on this side, yes, and I am on that side on the camera? Well, that is an excellent, excellent question, and that is because this camera is actually showing a mirror view of the room, and that is an excellent question. I'm not sure why it does that exactly. But what we will do is we will see how that is. There we go. Is that better? Um, yeah. I think we've done it correctly now. That is actually how the room is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So you're on the right side now. Mm -hmm. Very good. Good correction point, darling. Good, good, well noticed. Mm -hmm. Very, very clever. Very, very clever. Now... He was sitting on the fence, quite invisible. It isn't fair, he muttered to himself, after she washed all those clothes so beautifully. No, it isn't fair. Mrs. Spink couldn't mend the line. It was so rotten, she was afraid it might break again. So she took all the clothes, she took all the clean clothes and spread them out flat on the grass in front of the house to dry. Dresses, petticoats, socks, they were all there as clean as could be. Mrs. Spink went in to take the... No, 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 no! <laughs> you can't do that in the middle of the broadcast. You can't... No, no, no darling, come on. No, 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 no. Okay. Just sit quietly. And we'll listen to the story, shall we? Because we're mm -hmm. teaching people about Mr. Pinkwhistle. Yeah. Mr. Pinkwhistle is a very important character at this particular point in time for society because the idea of doing good turns for other people is not a bad idea. And Enid Blyton, you see, who wrote this story, actually stayed here at Camelot Castle. And who knows, she may have even thought of Mr. Pinkwhistle here in this very room. Because this room here used to be a lounge for the guests of the hotel when it first opened, and when Enid came in here. In fact, it is a distinct possibility that this story could have been written in this very room. But there we go. Let's continue. It was so rotten that she was afraid it might break again. So, darling, don't, don't pick your... No, darling, no, don't do that. You're on the camera. Don't pick your nose. Anyway... Mrs. Smink couldn't mend Hey, what's the fire? Which fire? That fire about. Oh, that's Gaina. She's saying hello. Gaina Poignant. She's saying hello. Indeed, we're talking about here the... Im Darling, don't pick your nose on the camera. Come on, please. That's one rule about doing live broadcast. <laughs> Do not pick your nose and eat your boogers. <laughs> not a good idea. I don't, that's not a good example for the other children out there. Please don't do that now, darling. Please don't do that. Oh. Otherwise, no, 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 no. Come on, that's a rule. Continue. Okay. She, she took out all the clean clothes and she spread them out on the flat green grass at the front of the house to dry. Dresses, petticoats, socks, they were all there, as clean as could be. Mrs. Spink went in to take the kettle off the fire, for she really felt she could do with a cup of tea. Mr. Pinkwhistle slipped in behind her, though she didn't see him. He sat on a chair and thought that what a nice, clean kitchen it was. And then a dreadful thing happened. Two dogs came out into the front garden, and what must they do but run over all those nice, clean clothes? There you go. There's a picture of the dogs. Look at that, running over the clothes. Naughty doggies. They didn't miss a single one. So when poor little Miss Spink went out to get them, they were there they were, all covered with dirty, muddy footmarks. She didn't cry. 
She just stood and looked and gave a heavy sigh. But Mr. Pinkwhistle cried. Tears rolled down his cheeks because he was so sorry for Mrs. Spink. It isn't fair, he whispered to himself. She worked so hard and it was all for her children. It just isn't fair. Mrs. Spink gathered up all the clothes and put them into her wash tub again. She washed them clean for the third time and then hung them up on the big error that swung from the kitchen ceiling. Then she went upstairs to see how the children were getting on. I'll have to iron your clothes in the morning, she told them. First the line fell down, and then two dogs ran over the washing. It's all in the kitchen now. Nothing can happen to it there. But she was wrong. Something did happen. A big heap of soot tumbled down the chimney, and when Mr. Pinkwhistle looked up at the clothes, they were all black with flying soot. How dare you, cried Mr. Pinkwhistle, shaking his fist at the soot. How dare you? Oh, I can't bear this. I must put it right. I must, I must. And out he rushed to put things right. Funny old Mr. Pinkwhistle. So that's the first chapter in the book, and I don't know if we want to read the next chapter, do we? Mm, yes. Yeah. Because then we find out what happened, don't we? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. So this chapter is, the first chapter was chapter one. Which chapter is this? Chapter two. Chapter two. <laughs> chapter two. And this chapter is called, Mr. Pinkwhistle Puts Things Right. And that's something that all of us at home can learn, isn't it? Mm-hmm. When we're talking to our children and so on and so forth, whatever problems there are in the world and whatever problems we might see in the world, we can always do something to put them right. And I just think it's a very uh, lovely thing to do to be able to share this particular story about Mr. Pinkwhistle. This is from a book, The Adventures of Mr. Pinkwhistle. And you can order it from uh, our dear friend, Mr. Bezos at Amazon, and he'll whistle one along to your home very, very quickly, and it's called The Adventures of Mr. Pinkwhistle, but this is chapter two, Mr. Pinkwhistle put things right. Now, nobody knows what's going to happen in this story, but I think we know, don't we? Okay, but we're not going to tell everybody, we're just going to read the book, aren't we? Okay. What does that word say? Mr. Mr. Pinkwhistle puts things things right. right. Excellent reading. What a good reader you are. Okay, so here we go. Chapter 2. Mr. Pinkwhistle puts things right. Well, what do you think Mr. Pinkwhistle meant to do? He meant to go and buy new clothes for all the four children. Good old Mr. Pinkwhistle. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. He was so upset to think that the clothes had been spoiled for the third time after Mrs. Spink had worked so hard and so cheerfully that he had to blow his nose hard to keep from crying. What are you doing, darling? Are you making a funny face at the camera? Okay. Well, let's hear what Mr. Pinkwhistle did. It's not fair, he kept saying. Why do these things happen when people try so hard? I won't have it. I shall put it right. It's no good, Beans. Hey, darling, don't make faces in the camera. No, 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 no. This is story time. People, are, they don't know this story. You know this story. We're supposed to be telling them a story. Ah! No, darling, come on. Let's finish the story, shall we? And then we've got to have a discussion. No, because then we've got to have a discussion about about the puppy, haven't we? Yeah. Okay, so let's finish the story, shall we? Mm-hmm. Okay. What's that, son? Oh, what's that? Let's have a look. Somebody has sent some doggies. Let's have a look at this. We'll just have a little break from the story now. And there we go. There are some doggies for you. Those are quite nice, aren't they? (laughs) 
Thank you, guest Ian. Some... That's very nice. Ian sent some doggies. Look, it's there's a cheetah or leopard. Cheetah or leopard, you're absolutely right. So, darling, are you going to come and sit here while I read the rest of the story? Or have you had enough? Yes. I have had enough. Read the rest of the story. Okay, read the rest of the story. Okay. Ah! Okay. Oh, Yin, we just, we had your imperial tort last night and it was absolutely delicious yin sent us a delicious tort from austria from the imperial hotel and we ate it last night with a little bit of cream and i have to say that has got to be the best cake in all of europe absolutely it was fantastic what is that darling you, you got that a feather from the from the cushion don't tickle daddy with a feather pulled it out oh that ah, it's a bit ticklish that's a bit ticklish okay <laughs> You can't tickle people on the broadcast, darling. Now, should we continue with the story? Because these guys are going to get impatient if I don't continue with the story. They need to find out what's happened. Okay. It's not fair, Mr. Pink. Are you, do you want to say good night? I'm going to have a little break. Caspian's going to have a little break. Caspian's going to have a little break. And what we'll do is we'll all have a little break from the story because chapter two is very exciting and I don't think we want to miss it. We want to read it together. It's a lovely thing. What are you doing, darling? He's having a little break. Mark it. How do we mark it in the book? Mark it in the book. That's right. We're not really allowed to turn pages down in books other than these books because these are paperback books and that's sort of okay. Is that all right? Uh -huh. So say good night to everybody. Good night. And you, let's stop our broadcast. Well, you go through with mummy, and I'm going to say a few more words. And uh, then. I'll continue with you. You want to continue with the broadcast now, do you? Until I've finished. Okay. Well, we just wanted to share with you the story about Mr. Pink Whistle. Chapter 2 really is, is, is where it gets very exciting. So we'll do Chapter 2 tomorrow night. For those of you that didn't miss chapter one. And uh, I hope you're all well. Do try to keep communicating. There is quite a, a tidal change here. You come in the camera this side. You're not in the camera properly. Here, I'll scooch over a bit. Yeah. You're quite tired, darling. Tell everybody who's coming. Who's coming, darling? Who's coming? Who's coming? Hmm? Okay. Anyway, it's been a lovely evening. Big tidal shifts occurring. Stay positive, everybody. We will see you very, very soon. And all our love from here. Do you want to say something, darling? Bye. Bye. Mm. Thank you.